When we put other hitters up there in this position, they're within inches of being exactly the same, no matter where they start. Looking at Ichiro, who starts in an unorthodox stance, or Al Approvals, who is somewhat in an unorthodox stance, because they're not the norm. They're different from the norm. One's extremely narrow, one's extremely wide. But when they land, they look just like Canerco. They're in the same hitting position, proportional to their height. The hitting position is this. When my stride foot hits the ground, I'm going to be centered or slightly back of center. What you want to emphasize is they're going to be 50-50 when they land. 60-40 on their back side is fine, too. What is not fine is 60-40 on their front side. So I'm at or near center. You'll see the action of stretching the rubber band here. Between Canerico's stride foot and his hand. You can picture that right where that line is, moving back and forth. That's the same stretch we're trying to create with your kids. If they can take, keep walk away from their hands, and the hands go back and the stride goes forward, they're going to be in a good hitting position. And last, the knob of the bat will be pointed somewhere around the catcher's feet. That's the correct launch angle. Not wrapped around their head, which would look like this, or laying back behind them flat. It's going to be tilted up, but not around the head. That's the similar bat angle just about every big league hitter is in at. They're not going to be exactly the same, but they're pretty close to what you're seeing with Paulie right there. To break the swing down to its two simplest parts, head foot down. I want to land center, and I want to land square. Square means his front shoulder, hip, and to an extent the foot are going to be close to the pitcher at landing. If they open up with one area, the others tend to follow. So if I open up with my front foot, the hip and shoulder tend to follow. So if I can land center and land close, close means the outside of my ankle, outside of my hip, outside of the shoulders are on the pitchers. If I can do that and land center, center means I have a chance to handle different speeds, close means I have a chance to handle both locations. The pitcher can't beat me with anything. So that's our biggest area of emphasis when we land. Now, breaking the swing down into its two simplest parts is there's a step. Forward movement ends when my stride foot lands, and now it's time to get into the rotational phase of the swing. That's the power part. So I often hear coaches say different things about the stride. The stride shouldn't gain ground, or the head shouldn't move in the stride. And guys, the stride is an entire body movement. I put a circle around his head, I put a dot on his back knee, You'll see that he does gain ground. Now, forward movement ends when his stride foot lands. When his stride foot hits the ground, he is now in the rotational phase of the swing, which means I can put this same line through his midsection like a nail, through his helmet, and he's going to rotate around that nail the rest of the swing, which he does. This ball is away. I, I filmed this one myself in spring training. This ball was on the outside corner. He hits it just inside his stride foot. And he hit it over the right fielder's head, just slightly into the right center field gap. For anybody else, that's a triple. For Polly, it was a double. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell him that. <laughs> he hit the heck out. But you can see how his head is down at the point of contact. The contact point, point for a pitch away is just inside the stride foot. And as he rotates, he stays right around that stationary axis. So what we want them to think is what your kids will do if they're not coordinated enough to do the rotation, it's oftentimes they swing just being upper body dominant or the opposite, lower body dominant. You have to be in sync here, and that's tough to do. The first problem you see with your kids is they swing, their upper body will move, and their back foot will stay anchored to the ground. The hip controls the lower body rotation once I get the foot down. So my back hip pocket, in my case I'm a right, this is my right hip pocket. I want to think my right hip pocket goes to the inside seat of the ball. Everything else below the hip, my knee and my foot, they're just going along for the ride. So as my hip rotates, my back shoelaces will typically point to the pitcher at contact, and then I stay shoelaces to the pitcher and my follow through to stay balanced. The pitcher of the swing. Again, all rotated around, stays very active. So when your kids that begin to try to rotate, but their front or their back foot stays anchored, think of that anchor like an anchor to a ship. Keeps the ship moving. That tug of war between the foot and the hip, the foot is always going to win. So they'll end up swinging. And they'll stay back, and they'll probably fall over backwards when they're done because their body's trying to rotate, but the foot won't let. The back side becomes not weight bearing. So my hip is rotating, and everything else below the hip is going for the ride. Because I'm trying to drive that energy against a firm front side. And that's what's going to keep him centered throughout the swing. So he's landing on two big knees, 
But then he's going to rotate his hips, and that front leg will lock out by the time he gets to contact. So he rotates around the stationary axis, and his hand path, as I mentioned a second ago, goes from knob to the catcher's feet, directly to the inside seam. He's inside the ball. That's a term that uh, you'll hear a lot as baseball coaches throw that out and hear it on TV. It means the bat is now lagging inside the baseball, in that barrel, because he has good whip action, releases into the ball, and stays through the ball. The barrel's going to chase the ball off the bat wherever it goes on the field. His head stays down when he does that. So we want to hit in a big hitting window, which means he gets level as quick as possible. You also hear that term short swing thrown out a lot. Here's what that means. You want to impress people while you're watching TV now. Short swing means my hand and my elbow will get to the body line at the same time. His hand gets to the el and his elbow gets to the body line at the same time. There's very little separation between the handle, the bat, and the shoulder. Now when he's in that short swing, he's now close to being level by the time his hands reach his body line. We want to hit in a big hitting with him, which means my barrel needs to go forward to and through the baseball as far as possible. So his bat stays on plane, and on plane is what most people think is level. It's actually eight degrees uphill because the ball is coming down eight degrees downhill. But we want him to think level. And his bat stays in the hitting zone from that one red mark to the other. The reason why Albert Pujols and Joe Maurer hit 330, 350 every single year in professional baseball is their bat stays in the hitting zone farther than anybody else in baseball. So the simple math of that says they're going to hit more balls solidly because my bat has a better chance when it's farther in the zone. And Canerico's doing a good job of that here. So when you end the follow through, their bat's going to get to the point of contact and roll right off their front end. We want to get the bat to the point of contact and let it chase the baseball off the bat, stay in that big hitting zone. So that point of the swing, which you see in that right now, is called extension. Extension means he stayed palm up, palm down, power point of contact, all the way through until his arms got locked out in front of him. And then it's when he rolls his hands over and completes the follow through in his swing. And then the follow through, he's going to finish near that center point again, ready to run. So that, that's a quick overview of mechanics. Now, how you get to some of those drills, or how you do that, I'm going to show you a couple of T drills, uh, or even soft toss drills you can do. The first one we're going to talk about, I'm just going to use three here, is a stride separation drill. I'm going to get them into the rhythm of their stance. We're going to step, I'm going to call this as a coach, we're going to stance, stride, and we're going to hold that position. We are now going to check the absolutes. I'm going to check these at the near center, near 50 50. We <coughs> stretch the rubber band, walking away from this hand. And now the bat will around the catcher's feet. If those are correct, I'll say swing. And you don't have to have a tee. That's why I said you can group them up in a circle as long as they're away from each other, not hitting each other, and do that same thing, and it's beneficial. Because at the professional level, we're blessed to have it. You've seen the facility, a great facility out there in the suburbs. It attracts a lot of pro players. Lou used to work out there when he was in the big leagues, too. Those guys will come in and hit. They'll go up in the weight room and they'll work out. They'll do their long toss. You watch those guys in the weight room. These are 30-year-old men. Watch them in the weight room, they'll do a set, they'll stand up in front of the mirror, not just to admire themselves, they'll do this over and over again. They only have a bat in their hand, they're doing it imaginary, I guess. And Lou, how often do you find yourself still doing that today? Carlos Quinn does that at his locker before every game. I'm the guy in the grocery store line doing that, but can't more. I haven't played 10 years. <laughs> 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 my mind never shuts hitting off. He's right. Okay, Quinn.